EOS is a project that has many backers and detractors, lovers and haters. Some have labelled it Blockchain 3.0 and an Ethereum killer. Others have had less than savoury terms. So, what's the real deal with EOS? Hi, this is Guy, and in this video I'm going to be taking an in-depth look at this polarising project. Two quick things I need to get out of the way first though. As usual, this is not investment advice. Everything I say here should be used as a helpful educational resource and nothing more. Also, if this is your first time joining us, howdy! You may want to click on that subscribe button so that you're kept abreast of our best crypto reviews. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's get back to EOS. To kick things off, let's begin with what EOS is. EOS is a decentralized platform providing fast and free transaction processing. The blockchain will support smart contracts, which means developers can create decentralized applications or dApps on its blockchain. EOS also wants to create a platform that behaves like an operating system. The purpose is to make it easy and simple enough for anyone to use and build on. In addition to its dApps, EOS aims to create a platform that will handle millions of transactions every second. Why? Because there are hundreds of thousands of transactions performed each second in the financial sector. The crypto industry needs a platform that can handle this type of demand, and EOS wants to answer that call. But what makes EOS such an intriguing cryptocurrency? Well, for starters, this multifaceted project offers features and users that other digital currencies don't make a priority. A great example of this is the EOS strategic vision. With this vision, EOS focuses on four principles – scalability, development, users and enterprises. So let's start with scalability. EOS believes scalability is one of the most critical pieces of blockchain adoption. The project focuses on both vertical and horizontal scaling, which means not only does it plan on addressing scalability internally, but EOS wants to improve its interoperability with other blockchains as well. Vertically, the project will focus on technologies such as updated WebAssembly, multi-threading, node improvement, advanced databases and resource reduction. Driving its scalability is the desire to fine-tune and optimize throughput on the network while simultaneously reducing the resource load required to process transactions. Horizontally, EOS targets improving communication protocols while exploring multiple options that allow applications to talk across several blockchains. The effort to create a scalable, efficient and stable blockchain is an ongoing effort with the EOS project. You can read more about it by following the links we've provided below. A second area in which EOS is focusing is through its developer portal. Recently, the project released EOS IO2, which offers features that makes it easier, more secure and faster to build on the platform. Additionally, the project provides all the tools necessary to get started developing on EOS. Tools like EOS Virtual Machine, EOS JS, an EOS IO software development kit for Swift, and many, many more. If you're a developer, you'll get a smoother experience along with a more diverse and robust blockchain environment. Now, okay, this all sounds well and good, but what are developers actually building on EOS? Well, you only need to head over to the list of EOS dApps to get a sense of it. There are currently over 300 dApps that have been built on the EOS blockchain. These range from gambling dApps to games and exchanges. Some of these are pretty active, with thousands of users and extensive transaction volume flowing through them. EOS has also been the recipient of some dApp developers who have moved over from other ecosystems like Ethereum, etc. Having said that, it still lags way behind more established dApp development blockchains. For example, Ethereum has over three times the number of dApps on its network with much higher user stats, something we'll touch on later. Anyways, let's move on to the last two pieces of the EOS strategic vision. These are on users and enterprise. EOS views users as an integral piece of its blockchain environment. 
The project is committed to using community feedback to improve on the current platform, thereby creating an engaging and secure experience for all who use it. Similarly, the project wants to meet the needs of its enterprise users as well. EOS does so by creating high-performance consensus algorithms, providing tools to maintain regulatory compliance, and implementing enterprise-grade levels of security. If you want to read more about the EOS vision statement, then you can head over to their website, which I've linked to below. Now, in addition to focusing on ways to improve its environment, EOS also uses a delegated proof-of-stake consensus or DPoS consensus algorithm to handle the transaction load and manage data. If you aren't familiar with DPoS, it's similar to a simple proof-of-stake consensus, but instead of being a node yourself, you're voting for a person to represent you. Your holdings determine the strength of your vote, so you can determine who is verifying each EOS blockchain transaction. EOS calls these representatives witnesses, and there are 200 of them for the EOS blockchain. EOS uses a modern DPoS consensus with BFT, that's Byzantine Fault Tolerance, which allows the project to efficiently scale to an unlimited amount of validators. The current challenge is to discover a path forward that doesn't hinder latency as growth on the platform occurs. One of the main benefits of EOS's consensus mechanism is that transactions are fee-less. Unlike with proof-of-work blockchains, you do not have to pay any miners to propagate your transaction. Now, having said this, it's important to note that there is still a cost associated with confirming transactions, but this cost is shared among the network as a whole through inflation. So the devil is in the detail. Now, let's turn our attention to EOS's native crypto, EOS. The EOS ICO took place on June 26th, lasting for an entire year. From a purely monetary standpoint, EOS is one of the most successful ICOs as the project raised almost $4.1 billion. EOS has garnered a lot of attention and a substantial amount of investments from China, which helped the project raise the amount it did. However, the ICO itself was shrouded in controversy. The project held an uncapped ICO for one full year without having a viable product, while emphasizing that the token served no purpose on the EOS blockchain. Now, the EOS token purchase agreement stated, As mentioned above, the EOS tokens do not have any rights, uses, purposes, attributes, functionalities, or features. They are not an investment, currency, security, commodity, or any other kind of financial instrument. So, as a result, the question arose as to whether or not the token was valid and why investors were dumping so much money into it. Of course, that was back in the golden years of the 2017 bull run, and investors were throwing their funds into any project with a snazzy website. EOS appears to have come out from that period relatively unscathed. For example, the project recently reached an agreement with the SEC to pay a one-time $24 million fee based on the company's sale of its ERC-20 token. During its ICO, 90% of the available tokens were sold to those participating in the event, while the other 10% were set aside for the EOS team. EOS began trading on July 1, 2017. It saw an all-time high of just below $23 on April 29, 2018, but has since followed a path familiar to the altcoin markets. Since EOS did not have its own blockchain when the project launched, EOS tokens were initially issued on the Ethereum blockchain as ERC-20 standard tokens. Eventually, the project migrated over to a mainnet native token in June of 2018. EOS has a current circulating supply of nearly 938 million tokens, with a total supply just over 1 billion. The project does not have a maximum supply limit, as it uses inflation to fund transactions. However, a 5% cap has been agreed upon for inflation rates. But enough about prices and tokens. Let's take a moment and learn more about the EOS team. If you're not aware of it, the EOS project is developed by a company called Block One. This company is led by CEO Brendan Bloomer, CTO Dan Larimer, and COO Andrew Bliss. Bloomer is the CEO and founder of EOS, and he began his journey as a serial entrepreneur at the young age of 15. He's founded many businesses, selling several of them to larger companies. He has founded or been heavily involved in companies such as Accounts.net and OK.com. In 2017, he established Block One and began development on the EOS project. 
The CTO is Dan Larimer, who's been involved in the cryptocurrency space for quite a while. For example, he founded BitShares back in 2013 as the first decentralized exchange, as well as Steam, the blockchain-based social network. Last but not least is COO Andrew Bliss. Bliss is the person responsible for all EOS corporate development and global business operations. He's a member of the Block One founding team where he initially served as CFO. Bliss has assisted with the development of the EOS IO protocol and is an integral part of the company's venture capital department. Bliss served in several financial capacities, including at Rockwell Collins for the better part of a decade. So with a solid team in place, EOS is taking the steps needed to become successful in the industry. This is evident in the recent updates provided by EOS. For starters, the project released its EOS IO2 software with updated features and tools for developers. EOS IO2 helps decrease the barriers of entry for those new to EOS while reducing pain points for those currently developing on the platform. Additionally, EOS announced a browser-based integrated development environment or IDE. With a browser-based IDE, EOS developers can get started in just a few minutes building and sharing their EOS IO projects. Basically, EOS is doing its part to make things easier for its developers. Thankfully, EOS is listed on an absolute plethora of exchanges. The token does the most volume on BKEX, totaling over $200 million daily. Other exchanges like LBank, Digifinex, and Cointiger do more than 100 million in volume in a 24-hour period as well. That doesn't mean you can't find EOS on an exchange you're familiar with. You can buy EOS on Binance, Coinbase Pro, or Bittrex as well. Each of these platforms do more than 10 million in total daily volume. EOS is also traded against numerous different fiat and altcoin pairs, although the bulk of the volume is traded against Bitcoin and Tether. Taking a bit of a closer look into the order books, you can see that there is healthy liquidity for EOS. Deep order books with tight bid-ask spreads. It's safe to say that you could pretty easily execute large orders with limited slippage. Once you have your EOS, your best bet would be to store them in a secure offline wallet. There are numerous wallets that support it, including hardware wallet devices. We've actually done a post on the best EOS wallets that you can find below for further reading. And there you have it. You're now officially an EOS expert. OK, maybe not an expert, but hopefully we've helped shed some light on this intriguing cryptocurrency. But what do I think about the EOS project? I think this is a project that can provide legitimate competition to Ethereum. This is a great application developer platform, and it's possible that a few high-profile projects will wind up sharing this space. EOS is more scalable than Ethereum, which is a point in its favor, plus it can process transactions much faster. It's easy to see that the project is serious about providing a robust, reliable, and secure platform for anyone who uses it. This is especially true for enterprise users, which may very well lead to quicker adoption of the EOS platform. However, EOS has its share of challenges as well. While Ethereum boasts over 2,600 dApps on its platform, EOS is still playing catch up in this department. It remains to be seen whether or not it can earn more market share. You also have that year-long multi-billion dollar ICO that may have left some jaded. Having said that, though, the recent settlement with the SEC has lifted a veil of uncertainty that existed over the project. So EOS has a lot to live up to, but with the team behind it and the vision and features the project is already showing, we won't be surprised if it does succeed. But we'll be keeping a close eye on it. And so ends my review of the EOS project. But enough from me. I want to hear from you. What do you think of EOS? Let me know in the comments. And if this review was helpful, then show your support by hitting that like button and subscribing. Much more will be hitting the blockchain soon.